Good evening, afternoon or morning, Movie Cat is at the microphone and today I will tell you about Korean keen action thriller, I saw the devil. Ji Yoon got stuck on the road in the snow due to a flat tire, some unfamiliar man stops and offers to help with the wheel replacement, but the girl refuses because she has already called a tow truck. The stranger anyway goes to see the wheel. Ji Yoon is talking on the phone with her fiancé at this time. Kim is a special agent of the National Intelligence Service and he says he's sorry to have to work on his fiancé's birthday. It's time for Kim to go and he hangs up. The stranger is still here and the girl once again politely refuses his help. She looks at the yellow bus of a stranger and tries to understand why he does not leave, when suddenly a man breaks the glass with a hammer and hits her on the head, on the outskirts of the city, in a maniac's barn. A wounded girl comes to her senses and asks not to kill her because she is pregnant. However, the maniac still beats her with a knife and then cuts the body with a cleaver. At the same time, the girl's wedding ring flies off her severed hand and rolls into a ditch. In the morning, some teenagers find a severed ear in a field by the river. Later, police and volunteers arrive at the scene to search for the body. Also a retired police chief arrives who is the father of a missing girl and then arrives her fiancé Kim. Suddenly, the police find the girl's head. The crowd runs there and someone accidentally hits the forensic specialist on the arm, so he drops the box with girl's head on the ground. Ji Yoon's father and fiancé are horrified. Kim and all Ji Yoon's relatives mourn the girl at the funeral. In a whisper, Kim apologizes to the deceased bride that he did not save her and promises that the one who did this to her will experience very severe pain. After the funeral, Kim goes to work and since there are no urgent matters, he receives two weeks vacation from his chief. In the underground parking, Kim asks a colleague of the agency in charge of technical means for one device, a capsule with a tracking device and a microphone. The father of deceased girl, as a former police chief, obtained for Kim the cases of four men who had previously been suspected of similar crimes. Kim takes pictures of their faces and goes to talk to each of them in turn. To the first suspect, Kim climbs through the window and, finding the suspect masturbating, beats him cruelly. Kim shows a photo from the scene of the attack on his fiancé and asks the guy if he was there. And after a negative answer, he takes a wrench and beats the suspect several times in the balls with all his might. A few hours later, the beaten guy, being in a hospital, confesses to the police that he kidnapped a teenage girl from school a few years ago and killed her. The policemen are very surprised why such a bastard suddenly had a conscience and who the hell thrashed him so much. The next day, Kim catches and beats a second suspect on the road. There is not the right man again. Later Kim rips off his photo from the wall at home. Ken Chal Jen is the next in line. He is ex the one who killed his fiancé. But the agent does not yet know this. At the same moment, at the other end of the city, on the outskirts, the girl is standing at the bus stop. Ken Chal Jane drives up to her on a yellow school bus and after some persuasion picks her up. A minute later, the maniac beats the girl with a pipe right in the car. In the morning, Kim arrives at the Ken Chal Jane's registration address but finds only his mother, father and teenage son, whom Ken Chal Jane abandoned, posing as an insurance agent who needs to confirm client's identity in order to pay out. Kim finds out the address of Ken Chal Jane's actual residence. Arriving there, he enters the house while the owner is away. Kim breaks open the locks on the table and finds trophies in the drawers, women's handbags, underwear, jewelry. In the barn, he sees a huge bloody stain on the floor and in the ditch he finds a ring, the same one he gave Ji Yum for the engagement. Meanwhile, Ken Chal Jane is at work, delivering college student girls home. He decides to take the last girl remain to himself, rape and kill. However, Kim is already waiting for him there, attacks the maniac and easily defeats him in a fight. In a fit of rage, Kim grabs a large stone and picks up it over the defeated opponent's head, but then remembers why he is actually here. Kim inserts a capsule into the mouth of the passed out maniac, forces him to swallow it and breaks his wrist with his foot before leaving. Ken Chal Jen wakes up in a terrible condition after a while. Nearby on the ground, he finds an envelope with a large amount of money and decides that the attacker is just crazy. The maniac gets up, puts a knife in his pocket, hides his broken face under his cap and, believing that his yellow bus is already wanted, 
he goes to catch a ride. The only car that stops is a taxi. Ken Chal Jen immediately sees that something is wrong with the driver but he gets in. Anyway, the maniac notices that the license has a photo of another person, and the passenger in the back seat looks somehow strange. Ken Chal Jen tells the guys that they are unlucky today and steps first one, then the other and then repeat this procedure until the car crashes into a tree. The maniac gets out of the car and looks into the trunk. There he sees the corpse of a real taxi driver and a package with a new sports uniform. After washing himself in the river, Ken Chal Jen throws all three corpses out of the car and drives to the city. Using the navigator, Kim constantly follows him. Ken Chal Jen, waiting for the morning, comes to the office of a private doctor where they bandage his broken wrist. Ken Chal Jen notices a young assistant at the doctor's reception and dragging her into the back room. He tries to rape her, since the capsule that he has in his stomach has a microphone. Kim can clearly hear what the maniac is saying and doing. The special agent is not at all in a hurry to help the girl out. He wants to wait and interrupt the maniac at the very moment of pleasure. After waiting, Kim enters the back room and beats the maniac with a fire extinguisher, hands and a chair. Kim asks a nurse not to leave, because the maniac will need medical help. After these words, Kim rins the victim's leg, takes a scalpel and cuts the Achilles tendon. Ken Chal Jen wakes up in the evening in a stolen taxi, somewhere in an empty parking place. His whole body hurts and he can hardly stand on his bandaged leg. The maniac understands that the guy who attacked him for the second time easily finds him and even at the most inopportune moment. Therefore, Ken Chal Jen searches for a tracker in his clothes and when he does not find it, he decides to abandon the car, just in case there is a tracking device in it. Kim's phone rings and in the receiver, first the father and then the sister of the deceased GM are asked to stop and no longer look for a maniac. After all, the police are now closely involved in this and Kim, even if he can take revenge, Ji-Yoon will not return it anyway. Ken Chal Jen, meanwhile, goes to visit his friend, who is just throwing the things of the kidnapped people into the stove at this very moment. His friend is also a killer. He eats his victims. For some mysterious reason, a pretty girl lives with the cannibal in the big house. She doesn't eat people. The cannibal, having heard Ken Chal Jen's story, assumes that the boyfriend of one of the victims is chasing him. This unknown pursuer himself has now become like them a hunter who is interested in catching up, torturing and letting go, and then repeat this procedure. It seems that Ken Chal Jen has seriously messed up on the cannibal's opinion. Kim, having listened to their conversation up to this point, takes a pistol from the glove compartment and heads to their house. Meanwhile, Cannibal wants to prepare food and for this he drags another kidnapped girl into the kitchen. There, Kim attacks him, immobilizes him and decides to butcher him with a cleaver, just as he himself does with the victims. Suddenly, Ken Chal Jen appears at the door with a gun and shoots. Kim dodges, jumps out the window and then climbs up to the second floor. There, in turn, he knocks out everyone who rises to him, Cannibal, his strange girlfriend and Ken Chal Jen himself. He loads Ken Chal Jen into the car and leaves. Kim has been injured several times in the fight and hasn't slept in days, so he decides to rest. His subordinate treats his wounds and says that the agent slept for almost two days. And his prisoner too. The subordinate tells Kim in a whisper that the capsule he gave is a great thing, but only if the tracked one suddenly will not get a food poisoning. Another subordinate is trying to persuade Kim to hand over the maniac to the police. But the agent replies that he promised on Ji Yum's grave to take revenge. Ken Chal Jen is disabled by a strong dose and should not have heard all this, but he does. Later, as usual, Kim takes the maniac and throws him somewhere on the outskirts of the city. Ken Chal Jen comes to his senses and laughs. Remembering about Capsule, he says aloud that he knows his opponent, the Ji Yum's groom that Ji Yoon, who admitted she was pregnant before she died. Kim did not know about the pregnancy and he comes into an indescribable rage. Ken Chal Jen walks into a pharmacy, takes several packs of laxatives and says loudly that he hit the pharmacist by a knife. Arriving at the place, Kim tries to help the pharmacist and stop the arterial bleeding. 
And at this time the maniac gets rid of the capsule, cloaks the taxi driver in the toilet, steals his car and calls the police. A few minutes later, the head of the homicide department is told that Ken Chal Jen is ready to surrender. Kim, who has now lost the opportunity to pursue the maniac, goes to the hospital and asks Cannibal where his friend will go to and what will he do. Cannibal replies that Ken Chal Jen will always equalize, name me, he will kill everyone who is dear to Kim. Anyway, he still gives pleasure to women before their death. Cannibal adds and laughs. The agent, in a rage, tears the cannibal's mouth with his hands. Kim suspects that Ken Chal Jen will go to the house where Ji Yoon's father and sister live. Kim calls the police, the homicide department and tells about the maniac's plan. Ken Chal Jen, who knows Ji Yoon's address from her documents, visits the old policeman and breaks into the house and beats him up. Suddenly, the daughter of a policeman comes home from the store. When Kim comes, there is no main egg, but Ji Yoon's father is beaten and dying. His younger daughter Si Yoon is kidnapped. The homicide department chief O is furious at the agent for not handing over the main egg to the police, but allowing him to kill people. Ken Chal Jen calls the police again and names a place where he can be arrested. He has already killed and thrown away kidnapped Si Yoon. But he does not mention this. Ken Chal Jen appears at the crossroads. He is all wounded, but pleased, in his opinion, he defeated Kim. However, the agent is not going to give the maniac to the police now. Kim opens the driver's door and reversing quickly breaks it off, then directs his car to the maniac and, after performing a police U-turn, grabs Ken Chal Jen right in front of policeman noses. Kim brings the maniac to some abandoned barn with the firm intention of torturing him and not letting him go anywhere this time. However, Ken Chal Jen is a psychopath. He is not afraid of pain, but having fun. Then Kim builds a guillotine over him and the rope that holds the heavy blade he gives the maniac in the teeth. The agent also ties the same rope to the front door and then he leaves. On the street, behind him, the whole family of Ken Chal Jen gets out of a taxi, mother, father and his son. Kim called them ahead of time, giving them the address where they could find Ken Chal Jen. The agent also left a capsule in front of the maniac's face in order to listen to the last screams of the victim. Maniac's family pulls on the doors, which he holds with his teeth with all his might and screams as best as he can to his relatives to get out. But his father make another pull. The door opens. The guillotine falls. Ken Chal Jen's head rolls under the feet of his mother, father and son. Kim who heard all this goes and weeps bitterly, either out of regret for what he did, either from the realization the fact Ji Yoon is no more and his revenge did not return her. Thank you for your attention, press hearts, write a few comments to promote this channel, and be sure to subscribe if you want more retellings of Korean movies.